today we are going to be revisiting the ingenious Durafone coverage situation. One of the things I really enjoy about operating this channel is not only the opportunity to use all these different types of equipment but to learn about it and be able to have conversations with people that understand it much better than I do. I posted a video on this matter a couple weeks ago and I asked a couple questions in that video and I was hoping that somebody who knows this type of material would come along and provide some input and that happened very quickly. So now I understand the type of cable we're using, the connectors that are on it and why this doesn't work the way I thought it would. So this is a piece of the larger spool of cable that I showed in the last video. Hopefully I'm not inverting it. This is a type N connector and this is a type TNC connector. So that's what we need to connect the antenna that it came with. And this cable is called LMR cable. This is LMR 400 cable. This is LMR 195. They look pretty much the same from the outside but they have different uh, shielding properties I guess. So we have two antennas here that, that the phone can take. This is the smaller one. This antenna has a gain of 2 dBi and this antenna which is much larger has a gain of 5 dBi. So I tested it with this antenna connected. This antenna connects directly to the base. And I walked around the blocks and observed how it performed. Then I connected this antenna and did the same thing. And I expected it to have a huge difference in performance. And I noticed an increase, but it just wasn't all that much. So the reason why it wasn't all that much is because of the attenuation of the cable. Attenuation describing in decibels the noise or signal loss due to the cable not being 100% efficient. Now if you want to get really scientific about this and wreck the equipment in the process, this is not 100% uh, consistent and accurate because the attenuation of the cable we're going to discuss in decibels dB and this uh, the specs provided by in, uh, Ingenious for the antenna gain is in dBi. From what I understand dBi is more of a theoretical measurement for a an omnidirectional antenna whereas dB is based off of a specific type of antenna or transmission that's my understanding of it. That could be in, inaccurate. Some of this stuff on here might not be 100% accurate. I'm describing it the best I can understand it. So, the cable that I had, which was this, this cable where this came from, that cable, I measured it approximately to be about 56 feet. So, according to this, a 100 foot segment of LMR 400 cable will introduce about 3.6 decibels of noise. So you take 3.6, multiply it by 0 0.56, and that comes out to be about 2. So when we determine the decibel gain, or dBi gain, of this antenna, we have to subtract the loss from the cable. So you take the 5, which this antenna is claimed to be, subtract the 2 for the noise, and you end up with only three. So during my tests we were getting two dBi of gain because this was connected directly to the base no attenuation. This is two dBi and this was really only giving me three in practice. And I find these calculations very interesting because that's a pretty accurate representation of what I encountered. This worked better but only a little bit better than this where I was expecting 2 versus 5 to be a pretty considerable difference. So what I was told is that in order to make this work we need to get rid of that attenuation which you would do by using <coughs> a shorter cable. So 
I went onto the computer and I ordered a three foot, that seemed to be about the smallest size I could find, cable. This cable was uh, LMR 195, which is a lower grade. So instead of 3.6 decibels per 100 feet, this is 11.1. .1. But since it's only three feet, it's still a very small number. So if we take the 11.1 uh, .1 and multiply it by 0 0.03, we get 0 0.333 uh, decibels of noise. So pretty nominal, not even, you know, not even 0.5 very low number so uh, in this case we would have the 5 decibel DBI antenna minus 0.3 which would make this antenna now 4.7 DBI so now we have a pretty significant increase so I went to hook this up and test it and uh, well, this cable is just its the wrong one I ordered a TNC to N and I got an N to N uh, so I was sent the wrong cable and it's also wrong because these don't screw on to this base. The threading is uh, inverted and now I don't know which one is standard. I don't know if this is standard or this is standard. So I have a feeling that trying to get the correct cable for this is going to be quite challenging. So I couldn't use that. So I just cut this piece off of the other one and uh, I didn't have the right crimping tool so I just very poorly connected that and this is probably only about two feet so if we calculate the attenuation of this um, 3.6 times 0 0.02 we get 0 0.072 so called 0 0.1 so in my most recent test I did yesterday we ended up with a 4.9 DBI gain using this antenna now there was a difference. The performance with this short cable and this antenna blew it out of the water compared to the first test. It's hard to say if the coverage like I can't say that it double, triple, etc. because I don't really know what the actual end of the signal is like in a line of sight not line of sight like how the crow flies kind of thing because I'm walking around the neighborhoods and in some spots there's you know more ledge there's more soil there's more trees more houses it's not like I'm just walking straight away from the base to be able to tell oh I, I should I should do that in one way and, and kind of get an idea from that but the point is um, there's two areas I want to use this telephone one of the areas before the reception was very dodgy the other area had no reception whatsoever this time I got a pretty decent signal at the first area and I got a dodgy signal at the second area. So one area improved, one area went from no coverage to workable coverage. Huge difference. There are still two dead spots on the way from the house to the second area. From the house to the first area, 100% coverage. So getting rid of the attenuation or signal loss or noise from the cable made a huge difference in the reception. Now I don't know if getting this higher up is really going to solve this problem. It's it's going to be an act of balance because in order to get it up higher I need a longer cable but with more cable introduces more attenuation so let's say if if I put it up on the roof 20 feet over the house we'll take the 3.6 and multiply it by 0 0.2 we're introducing 0 0.7 attenuation which drops the antenna down to only a, uh, a 4.3 dBi and I'm not sure what's more important is it more beneficial to have more sensitivity or is it more beneficial to get the antenna higher up off the ground I don't know the answer to that it probably depends on the terrain so that question we can likely only answer through experimentation. It kind of doesn't matter because um, it's not like I'm going to take the base and strap it to the antenna mass and stick it up on the roof. That, that's ridiculous. So we're kind of stuck with the limitations of what's here. Um, 
and it's not quite right. It's, it's almost there, but it's not quite good enough. So what I've done is I went on the computer. This is a 50 ohm antenna. I ordered a 50 ohm 15 dBi antenna, which is three times more than this one. And we're going to see what that does. I don't know if the antenna is fake. It's allegedly 48 inches tall, so it's a pretty big antenna. Um, and it wasn't really cheap either, so I'm hoping that that solved the problem. And I'm hoping it solved the problem such that I can leave the antenna in the attic versus mounting it on the outside of the house, because then I wouldn't have to worry about all the lightning protection, although I'd like to put lightning rods in the house anyways. Um, I wouldn't have to worry about as much lightning problems. So that's been ordered, waiting for that to come in, and we'll have to retest it again. I hope that that works. I think it might. I really think it might because the difference between 2 to 4.7 was huge. So even if that antenna is a joke and it's only like 8 or 10 dBi instead of 15, that might be good enough. So, very interesting stuff here. We might have a solution. I don't have a solution for this. I gotta try to get the right cable and wait and see what the connector is for the other antenna. I think it's the same. I think it's this type type N connector. Um, we'll see. So I'll do another video once I get that antenna in and I'm able to test it and I'll report back on the performance.